For the topic of decision analysis, we're going to look at several things. We're going to look at making decisions when we are dealing in an uncertain world, when we move then into risk, and then also uh, using sampling information to gain better idea of what could possibly happen. So in a, the world of uncertainty, we will usually use decision tables. We could use a decision tree as well, but the two, two tools that we have at our disposal right now are decision tables and decision trees. A decision table, usually we have the decisions as rows. So if we have three different alternatives, D1, D2, D3 for decisions, and then states of nature, that's the possible outcomes, right? So we could have however many different possible state, states of nature or outcomes. So here I put in four. Those should be mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So we are dealing with um, some probability and statistics stuff, so you should refresh your memory on those things about what collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive are. Then we'd have some payoff. So this is a payoff table that we're talking about, right? So these would be numbers, right, in here. And if we're maximizing, then these would usually be profit or revenue, right, numbers in there. And then when we're dealing with uncertainty, it means we have no way of, of assigning probabilities to the outcomes or potential outcomes. So then we could use... We have different criteria that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the maxi-max, which is more of an optimistic approach. The maxi-min, which is more of a pessimistic or conservative approach. And then mini-max regret, which is somewhere in between. And once we have this, we could also move to the world of risk after looking at those. So in the world of risk we can simply assign probabilities to the S sub J's, all right, to the states of nature. All right, so back before we had S1, S2, S3, and S4. Because they're mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive, that means the probabilities have to add to 1.0. So we could have a 0 0.25, a 0 0.35, a 0 0.10. 0. So the last one would be a 3, right? Uh, 35 and 35, 70 plus point three, so they all have to add up to one. Those are considered our prior probabilities. We got that information from something. Uh, it could be historical data that we are basing this on. It could be our gut. But somehow we came up with these probabilities. Then... Um, what we might want to do is perhaps we are not happy with those probabilities or we're not sure that those are the right ones. So we might go out and try to gather more information. One way to do that is to sample. Uh, we could sample potential customers. We could sample current customers, things like that. That would help us gather more information and then we should be able to use that information to revise our prior probabilities. When we re revise our prior probabilities, then the new probabilities become posterior probabilities or branch probabilities. I think the book talks about both of them, but it uses the word branch quite a bit. So in order to do that, we're going to have some prior probability. We're going to sample, and that will give us more information to give us the posterior or branch.
probabilities. We're going to use something called Bayes' theorem. To do that, uh, I won't get into the actual showing of how to do the intersection with set theory and all that. I used to do that, but uh, t this time I'm going to shy away from that and look at it using Excel and also just using table format to calculate joint probabilities, marginal probabilities, and get us to the posterior probabilities. So all of this is great, um, but we, what we can do is, because we are now sampling, now we have sequential decisions. So a table is a little bit difficult to show sequential decisions. Um, so instead we might, we're going to move into the decision tree. So for a decision tree, we're going to represent nodes when we draw by hand, decision nodes, as squares. So here I might sample, or I may not sample. If I sample, then it'll probably go to a chance node, which will tell me whether the, sam the survey was favorable or unfavorable right? and no matter whether it was favorable or unfavorable I have another decision to make so I get another square node and then do I uh, build a small a medium a large right something like that then we might have chance nodes coming out of each one if I built a small is the demand uh, is the demand um, good or strong maybe strong versus weak strong versus weak right strong versus weak and then at the end when I draw it I like to put a little vertical line there to indicate the terminal node in the Excel that we will be using the add-in, we'll see that it actually creates a node for that, and you have to account for that. And then at the end, we have some dollar figure, perhaps, right? I'm just making up numbers. I don't know what's really going to happen, right? Same thing for unfavorable. We could, we could do a small, we could do a medium, we could do a large. And again, it would either be strong or weak strong or weak, strong or weak. Right. If I don't sample, then I still have a decision to make of small, medium, or large. Right. And then again we have strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. So, decision nodes are squares, right? chance nodes, chance nodes are circles, right? So coming out of each chance node, we will have probabilities. And then coming out of each decision node, we have a decision to make. And we'll talk about how to actually calculate this. And notice this is a sequential decision. We have two decision points. Uh, the first decision point right, is right here. This is decision one. And the second decision point, I tried to line them up, right, is decision two. So my first decision is, do I sample or not? My second decision is, uh, what what size pl um, thing I'm building? If I'm building a, a factory or a plant or something, All right? So that's the that's a, in a nutshell decision analysis and what we're going to be covering.